Hey everyone, welcome to quarantine workout number eight. Um, today it's still snowing outside, or at least the ground is still covered in snow, so we're inside again. Um, and I wanted to work on, obviously, some more drills we can do inside. Um, a lot of people have been asking about weighted balls. I think weighted balls are great for receiving the low ball and making sure your arm and wrist are stronger. Uh, but I assume that most people don't have weighted balls just sitting around the house. But I was hoping maybe people had stretch bands. Um, if they don't, I'll also go through the second time through and kind of jimmy rig something to my wrist. We have a two pound weight here and this is my wife's running belt. Uh, you could use a, a can of food or if you have uh, a Ziploc bag, you could put some dirt from the backyard in there. Um, anything to just put a little weight on that arm. But first we're gonna do this uh, low ball receiving drill with the band. Put it under your foot, or if maybe someone wants to stand behind you with it on them, and we're just going to receive 10 to 12 low balls. Feel your muscles in your wrist and your shoulder as you bring that ball up, working on stealing those low strikes. You can steal the low strikes, and your pitcher can expand the zone there. Chances are you're going to win. Um, you should talk about people's glove movement too with the up down. That's a good point. Thank you, Jamie. Um, a lot of people in the videos they've been posting, keep those coming by the way, those have been great. Um, it's very common to relax your glove up or follow the glove and its trajectory or the ball with the glove and its trajectory to the plate. So even though you relax it down, you then subconsciously come up and then you're chasing it down again. There's too much down and up movement. We really want to stay down if we go down and wait for the ball down there and then it's just a single move up to the ball. Just finish here with four more. Good, last one. Good. Then we will do some dry blocks, um, just side to side today. Put your glove on. Um, just work on distance today. Something a little bit different than what we've done so far. Most balls, I know in the major leagues, 75% of balls that are in the dirt are within your body frame, and we actually do a better job of blocking balls that are outside of our frame. But in order to be able to block those balls that are outside of our frame, we have to groove the pattern with our body and make sure that we're exploding side to side. So we'll go five to each side here. Be precise with these blocks. Get down into perfect blocking form if you can. There's no variables. There's no bad hops. There's no wild pitches right now. So try to be perfect. Check the announcements. I have a perfect blocking form checklist that I added to the announcements. Okay, I think we've got it fixed. Cool. Sorry about that, guys. We're new to using this tripod. And then from there, I wanna work on a transfer drill. Um, you could just do it on your knees. If you're outside, you can go ahead and keep the feet involved and go ahead and throw the ball. But since I'm inside, I just wanna work on transferring. Again, one of the things I'm seeing in videos is that as you're catching the ball, Jamie, will you throw me one? Oh, your glove is following through to the ball and then coming up and it makes that path long. Or even as you catch the ball, you're bringing it down in a loopy transfer. So right now we just want to practice as soon as that ball hits your glove, straight up to the hand. Uh, and even maybe before it hits your glove, you're already moving that glove to the transfer. Go 10 to 12 here. Fast as you can. Good. That was a perfect one. Nice pitch. The pitcher, the pitcher can move it around a little bit. They might be doing that on accident, that's fine too. Jamie's giving me perfect feeds right now. Mm. Two more. Good. All right, now we'll go back to the receiving drill. Just in case the video was sideways, um, I was just stepping on this, putting my wrist through and receiving. But for the second round, if you don't happen to have one of those bands, 
Again, just Jimmy rig something. It's not gonna be perfect. That's okay, I have this weight and Jamie's running belt. An ace bandage would work well An too. If ace you have bandage, one of those. a tube sock you could tie around it. It doesn't really matter. The point is just that there's a little bit of weight on there. See how funky it looks? It looks like it's gonna fall off, but it's secure enough. And then receive some low balls just with some weight on there. Go 10 here again. Whoever yesterday made the comment, and the crowd goes wild when the dog started barking, we all laughed out loud when we saw that. That was hilarious. Good. Nice work, guys. Two more. Oops. All right, take that weight off. Do the blocking drill one more time, side to side. Five each way, 10 total. Let's see if I can't make it all off the screen all the way. Here at the edge, but it's okay. I'm gaining, I'm getting a little bit of air right now, which is not realistic for the game. But I'm just training my muscles to really explode and then be athletic and catch me in a way that I can slide. Because if I'm not landing where I can slide, especially on carpet, which is really forgiving, I'm not gonna be in a good position to block and be athletic. Most balls in the game, if I have to go this far, I'm probably reach stabbing at it with my glove anyway. But we're just building muscles right now. All right, one more time through the transfer drill here. Somebody asked with the transfer drill, um, do you go in with your whole hand or do you try to get your grip on the ball? Good question. I'm trying to eagle claw it when I go in, these three fingers, so that once it's in there, I can use my thumb to bring it into the perfect position to be ready to throw. If I reach with my whole hand, then I don't have to really shift these two fingers and adjust, and that's gonna take longer, it's gonna be clunkier. So yeah, good question. I'm trying to eagle claw it. I think realistically in the game, I have a little bit of a, just a little bit of a flip to myself at high speed. But as you can see, even in a no pressure situation, that's a tough flip to catch. So we really want to train that we're going in to get it instead of flipping. And if a little miniature flip ends up happening in the game, that's okay. But we want to practice perfect if we can. Get three more. Perfect. All right guys, now I wanna to talk to you about when there's a runner on second and you're doing a little bit of a sequence. Okay, this is something that we can use this quarantine time to practice. Understand that there's different, understand that there's different sequences that you can use. Sign after one, sign after two, first sign, last sign, whatever you wanna do, you and your pitcher have to be on the same page. So your homework today from this quarantine workout is to FaceTime with one of your pitchers or one or more of your pitchers. <laughs> I want you to ask them what their, uh, what their least favorite part and what their most favorite part of quarantine is because everyone is experiencing this, experiencing this a little bit different, but if we can stay connected with our teammates, that's gonna help. And then what I want you to do is go through the sequence and make sure you guys are on the same page. Pick three different sequences that you can practice <laughs> and as you're going through, work on your cadence. When <laughs> someone's trying to steal your signs, the easiest way to give it away is by changing the tempo that you put your signs down. So if I was gonna go sign after two, tell me what this would be. It's a fastball outside, right? But if all of a sudden I go like this, see how I changed the speed a little bit? Everyone's gonna know that that's a fastball outside because I held it there for longer and maybe I even was accentuated with the pump of my arm. So work on the cadence and the tempo with your pitchers and do three different signs to make sure that you guys are on the same page because it's not fun when you get crossed up and it's not fun when the other team knows what's coming either. So any questions, Jim? Yeah, um, somebody asked how many feet you were going side to side in the previous drill. It's probably covering about arm's length, so maybe like six, six feet. feet. Um, and then somebody asked, 
for the receiving drill if you're also trying to catch it with like a particular grip? Good question. Ideally on all receiving drills, you're trying to simulate where the pocket is on your glove. If you're able to catch it with a glove on and the wrist weight, that's a great way to do it too. Um, but without the glove on, normally these three fingers are the pocket that you want to be simulating. Um, but if, if the wrist weight is, th is really making your hand clunky and clumsy, then just go ahead and make sure you catch the ball. Good question. Um, and then someone asked if you could go through like the proper form for uh, giving signals in terms of your body. Good question. So with my body, what I want to do is I want to point my two knees at the middle infielders so that the base coaches don't have anything to see. But the middle infielders a lot of times do want to see what pitch is being called so that they can position themselves accordingly. I want to use my glove to block the third base coach just in case there's any slippage under here. Use this glove right there under the knee. And then make sure you're tucking it right on the cup. If you're too low, the first base coach can see through here. If you're too high, everyone can see. A lot of times in the, in the younger fields, the high school fields with bad lights, even minor league fields, um, you're right in the shadow. So they, I use a white out. Some people have some white nail polish in the dugout in case a pitcher can't see or they actually make reflective strips in white and neon colors right on your fingernail so you can see. But again, tuck it deep right against that arm. And if you can rest your right forearm on your leg so that you're not giving away pumps, because a lot of times another sign you can use is how many times I pump a four or a five. You don't wanna be giving away signs because when you're younger, a lot of times you give a fastball and then you give a location, but on an off-speed curveball or, or changeup, you're not giving a location. So that's another way they could be stealing signs from the dugout or the base coaches is if you give two, a lot of times, if your arm moves twice, a lot of times you're giving a location and that gives away that it's a fastball. Whereas if you only give one, it could be a breaking ball or an off-speed. Um, somebody asked, what are your feelings on practicing with a small trainer's catcher's mitt? I love catching with a small trainer's mitt. I had uh, the all-star little glove that was black that they stopped making, and it was it was my uh, my prideful little glove that I had the older model that was black, and then I ended up losing it a few years ago. So now I got a new one. I love those little trainer's gloves. If you have access to one, those are great. Okay, I think that is all for now. Awesome. All right, your homework. Make sure you call one of your pitchers on your team. Uh, ask them how it is. Practice your cadences, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.